Um, shout out to uh, Lauren uh, Hafner, who I think when this comes out, like in three days after it comes out, will be headed to her bikini fitness show to compete oh. for the first time. So good luck, Lauren. Good luck, you Lauren. Friend of the show. Definitely don't good listen luck. to this show. <laughs> Good luck. I'm going to put this at the beginning, so if she does happen to turn it on. All right. No, I'm not going to do that. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Trash Movie Kings podcast. I am your host, Adam Edwards. Joey, this is how you do the intro. Uh, Before we get started, go ahead and follow us on social media if you haven't already. Follow us on X, Instagram, mostly Instagram. Joey was right about that. Uh, Instagram, TikTok, we're kind of falling off on that. I'll take the blame on that. Uh, And X is dying because of Elon Musk. Um... I guess we're on Facebook, but that's more of a group situation. Yeah, I only post on there whenever it's like an episode that I yeah. like, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. But we're uh, our handles Trash Movie Kings on everything. Uh, we are a podcast that watches bad movies and we talk about them. Uh, we are filmmakers ourselves, so we kind of have a, I think, a unique perspective on it. But uh, yeah. We're trash filmmakers. Well, not really. But. Not really. No, not really. <laughs> I wish we were. We probably yeah, have made movies by now. Especially, uh, I, yeah. I, don't I think get you'd be it. more productive. Yeah, we'd just be like, fuck it. Yeah, just throw in a babe. Yeah. I mean, like, after watching Narco Shark, I definitely feel a little more inspired than I have <laughs> in, in some time. Truly. Um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I'm your host, Adam Edwards. Joining me this week, Joseph Graham. Joey, how are you? Hey, um, a little under the weather this week. Hmm. Um, I don't know why I thought this was interesting. I think because Justin was talking about his being at a store. I was trying to have a good story about a store. Ah. Okay. So, <laughs> But all but all of that happened to me at the stores this week. I went to Home Depot and I bought two work lights and a bunch of color, uh, like uh, colorful bulbs for Halloween. Mm-hmm. And I realized that I it matches the set that I bought in college exactly. And I was like, <laughs> wow, 20 years ago, I purchased this exact same thing and did this. Very weird. The more things change, the more things stay the same. Yeah, but anyway, my Halloween setup is is good now. I, it's all like purple and green, and I have a, a Beetlejuice uh, sandworm in the yard. That's cool. When you mm-hmm. say it matches it exactly, do you mean like it's the same models and everything, or it's just the same yeah. idea? Well, uh, no, it's, cause it's funny because like I, I was setting up lights for the sandworm, and I had two lights, one small, one big, Work these 10 aluminum work lights. Mm. And I was like, you know, it'd be nice to have two more of these. And then I went to the store and I bought them and I was like, when did I buy those that is other those other two? And I was like, oh, in college when I didn't want to when I didn't have <laughs> access to movie lights and we were shooting things on video and you just like pop some, you know, red bulb, yeah. green bulb in there for like some interesting colors in your student projects. And I was like, man, I've had these things longer than most other film lights, cameras, mm-hmm. <laughs> all kinds of other things. Way more useful. So thank you, Home Depot. It's impressive that your tastes have stayed the same for 20 years but also that those products are still on the shelf <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was what later. i was shocked. i was like they're exactly the same yeah exactly i was like wow i can't think of many things that i could go to the store and buy that would be the exact same from yeah it was kind of like time travel it was yeah. very strange i just i turned a corner and i was thinking they're definitely like kind of different now no nope. yeah exact same yeah uh, well, Justin Petty and J.D. Karpicki are out on assignment this week. Uh, but joining us, we've got Apocalypse Howl. How's it going? Yeah, it's going good. I'm uh, completely worn down. Yeah. I was incredibly uh, <clears throat> looking forward to tonight. 
and sitting down and watching a movie. This movie did not disappoint. And so I, uh, I'm good. I'm good. I got to wake up probably, uh, I don't know, probably five 45 in the morning. Mm. And, um, I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Screw it. <laughs> Screw it. I don't know if y'all can deal with my sleepy eyes. I'll, I'll stay up till soon. No, I'm not. This is a different episode. Cause I, uh, well, last week I had like a beer and a claw. This is the first one I've done dead sober in a while, but I've had two. I'm on my second cherry Coke. Oh my Ooh. God, bro. You just made me want a bear claw. <laughs> I, oh. I meant a white claw, not, not a bear claw. <laughs> a bear and a, a beer and a bear claw. Damn. I want, one, like, I want one like a lot. Like, I just I really want to feel want really bloated before we start. No way, man. Bear claws are lean. <laughs> Give me that lean. protein based bear claw. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm also stone sober because I was sick earlier this week. Last weekend I was at ACL um, and Ooh. I got something while I was there. I think it was a stomach bug or something, but today's the first day I'm feeling closer to like 80%. So I had a bowl of Count Chocula before we started and I'm riding that high. Nice. I also had one spoonful of um, uh, what's that shit that you left over here, Adam? I'm still working through it. That ice cream from Ted Lasso. Oh, the Ted Lasso shit. Is yeah. that Ben and Jerry's? Jenny's. Jenny's ice cream. The biscuits yeah. with the boss flavor. Biscuits with okay. the boss. Yeah, I had a yeah. I bought that. that a while ago because you had to buy a minimum of like six pints or something for them to ship it to you. Right. Uh, Let's talk about it. You talking about? You talked about it. Yeah, yeah, but I bought it with the understanding that several friends were going to take these pints off my hands, and then immediately everybody was like, no, I actually don't need them or want them anymore, and so they were I just, just in my fridge, <laughs> uh, or they were in my freezer, and then, God, I guess it was the series finale that we watched at your house, Joey, and I just brought like three pints, I was like, this is your problem now. <laughs> And it has remained. I did finish yeah. off one of them. This is the second one that I'm that I opened this week. I think actually because I think yeah. my body without alcohol apparently because I don't drink all week is like maybe some sugar. I need sugar yeah. to stay up. It's all the same thing. Yeah, right? alcohol basically just makes me wired. Yeah, it's a decent ice cream. It's not one that I would eat a lot of. Well, if you uh, eat too much of it. You're going to have to work out extra yeah. hard. So this week we watched uh, 1987's Killer Workout, also called Aer Aerobicide. Mm -hmm. This is uh, written and directed by David Pryor, starring <laughs> Marsha Carr, David Campbell, and uh, Ted Pryor, who was the brother of the director. Mm -hmm. uh, Ted who Pryor play? plays... Chuck Dawson. Oh, hell yeah. No. <laughs> okay, so well, the director's name, not Mark Pryor. <laughs> David, David Pryor, is it? David. You, did you look at his, the rest of his movies? He said some of them were yes. good. Uh, they look good. Uh, we haven't watched any of his other ones. Uh, Which is surprising to me. It is. He, hmm. Well, and I was also surprised because he made a movie called Night Trap, Yes, which is but it's not, not the same but night, it's trap. Not night trap. Same same night yeah, trap. it's not the, yeah, it's the not video the same. game that we watch. Interesting, but it also looks interesting. It does. Mm. But yeah, he, this was his third mm -hmm. movie that he directed uh, after Sledgehammer and Kill Zone. So those but are Sledgehammer was oh. a video. Wait, Sledgehammer is one of those early SOV shot on yeah video shot on video movies. I think I've I have seen that one. Some oh, it's it. a video. Yeah. Also well, starring it's, Ted Pryor. It's a movie. It's shot on video, though. Shit. We should watch uh, Sledgehammer coming up soon. Yeah. I didn't pay enough attention to it when they did it on Joe Bob last year. I was more oh, attracted Joe Bob. to... He's on he Joe did, Bob's radar. Okay. Well, they Joe, Joe Bob did an SOV episode where he showed, I believe, I'm pretty sure it's Sledgehammer or something Hammer. I don't know. Man Killers looks interesting. Uh, and then also things. Sledgehammer. Yeah, this movie is very similar to a movie that we watched two years ago called Death Spa. We recorded an episode but never put it out. 
um, serial killer in a workout studio spa type thing. Uh, cheesy, a lot of fun, blood, boobs, all the good stuff. A lot of um, aerobics montages for oh, yeah. a lot of aerobics <laughs> moves that I'm not sure are real aerobics moves. I don't know. Questionable, dubious moves. They're not even montages. They're just straight up <laughs> <laughs> gratuitous like, shots of vaginas. It's, it's like <laughs> whole, it's just, yeah, it's like a whole class. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this movie seems to have an entirely created custom soundtrack with songs, with lyrics and everything. And a lot yeah. of them, they're all set to that. I liked the animal workout, the hip. Oh, yeah. Don't be a a good scout. Yeah, he does. Is he fucking the rail? Who the fuck is Mr. Hippo and Mrs. Pig? I mean, you don't want to know. Just fat people. There's serial killer references. Animal Uh, workout. (laughs) Oh, the fight scene. Yeah, the fight scene had a good one of those really dumb baseline. Mm hmm. With like a synth or something, and throw a guy in a trash can. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So good soundtrack. Good stuff. Very eighties. Hell, eighties. I guess you would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, as usual, Joey wrote out the well. Yeah, Joey wrote the plot summary this week. <laughs> we can no longer say as usual. Right? So uh, yeah, I leave for one week, and you guys give it to JD. I don't know why, uh, but cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I mean, I you don't weren't know here. What you expected. I have. I had heard <laughs> Justin do it before. Justin did it one other time, like a year ago or more now, <clears throat> and he was terrible at it. Also, so I was yeah. like, well, he's off. And then I was like, let's let give JD a try. And this yeah. was somehow different, but equally as bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yeah. JD's was good. I liked how it took up the entire episode. Yeah, it was just like the whole fucking movie, <laughs> which I think Justin has always <laughs> wanted this show to be where we just go scene by scene and talk about it. But I'm just like, I don't have yeah, the that's time. Not interesting to me. <laughs> It would be interesting if we if we watched the movie and then paused ahead it of and time talked about it. Oh yeah. And then like gathered our thoughts and mm-hmm. didn't just do it off the cuff and like had a plan. Like oh but then at that point you're just doing how did this get made? And right. that podcast exists a hundred times over. I like the way we do it. Yeah, I do too. You know, it's not perfect. I don't know that there's a perfect you know, if we, if any of us had good bylines anywhere, we would probably have <laughs> a good following. But this is all we do, and I, I'm fine with that. Who who was yeah. that one comment that was like, "Who are these guys?" And he, and whoever that was, whoever that asshole was, not percent <laughs> right, not percent right. Like, who the fuck are we? Um, well, I am a writer. Joey is a writer director. Adam is an editor actor we are people <laughs> who have done shit and no we're not up here holding up our emmys which some have and we're not talking that works, about so it because we're not <laughs> arrogant pieces of shit <laughs> assholes who care about titles and tiaras but we- but yeah, our opinion fucking matters, you dipshit. <laughs> bitch. And you son of a uh, bitch, whoever you were months ago, yeah. put that somewhere. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and despite the fact that you were right, <laughs> you're also kind of wrong. So fuck you, guy. Oh, let's yeah. maybe cut all that. I don't know. And it hurt, right? <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Joey wrote out the plot summary, uh, much shorter this week, and we will get to it. Ready? Let's do it. Yep. So, Rhonda Johnson, a hardworking small business owner, is going through it. Not only are her 
are her employees not respecting her. I just had to spend my time teaching your class instead of doing my books. And then you show up five minutes after the class is over with? I don't think so. But her clients are being ruthlessly murdered at her gym. Wow. And canceling memberships. But thankfully, a Thanos-faced Lieutenant Morgan is on the case. <laughs> but he seems a little too interested in this body bag of blood he finds in a locker to be of any use. But thankfully, Chuck Dawson, who is yeah, ripped, Chuck Dawson, who is ripped, is here. Who the hell are you? Hi, I'm Chuck Dawson. As a new employee, and he cleans up the gym and beats some lugheads ass and then bangs a hot gym client. I gotta get back to the workout for a while. I got a lot to do. Well, I think you got a lot to do right here. Meanwhile, the murderer has a real big night. He revokes the membership cards to life of at least six gym clients. So Rhonda's business is literally starting to bleed. <laughs> <laughs> and Lieutenant Thanos is running out of body bags. So... <laughs> Ripped ass Chuck Dawson comes to spy on Rhonda at her home. Creepy. Thinking she may be in danger, but he is attacked by the lughead guy, Jimmy, who he beat up earlier. But this time, Chuck loses the fight and Jimmy runs away. Chuck explains to Lieutenant Thanos that he was sent by Rhonda's business partner from San Francisco. And he believes that the lughead, Jimmy, who seems to be obsessed with Rhonda, is out to kill her next after running her small business. After ruining her small business. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I just liked your, like, I'll take that into consideration. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> But before anything else transpires, big twist here, Lieutenant Thanos figures out that Rhonda Johnson is actually Valerie Johnson, a former model who had 75% of her skin burned off in a horrific tanning bed accident. Look, is this what you wanted to see? Is that it? And her motivation for killing everyone, he surmises, is that she doesn't like that there are other attractive people in the world. He arrests her. Maybe. So then Jimmy, who is obsessed with Rhonda, kills Chuck Dawson with an ice pick and then tries to kill Rhonda while she's in the buff. But Rhonda shoots him dead with a giant fucking gun. It was Jimmy the whole time. And Rhonda Johnson is an innocent small business owner. But Lieutenant Thanos isn't buying that shit. He takes Rhonda out to the side of a road, I don't know, to kill her. But Rhonda kills him first, thankfully. And she goes back to the American dream of running her business <clears throat> and murdering beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't really do the Vincent Price, but that, they do the, uh, the end of the movie is her smiling at camera a la the thriller video. Good yeah. stuff, Valerie. Good stuff. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, some Rhonda. nice twists and turns. Valerie. Well, yeah, Rhonda, Valerie, whatever her name is. She changed her name so nobody could track her. <clears throat> yeah, just, for just her first name though. Valerie Johnson. Well, Johnson <laughs> is a very popular last name. She also didn't Why change, change her face. <laughs> <laughs> True. And she as Valerie her. Johnson, she was an incredibly popular model. <laughs> but, mm, and true. then she covers her whole body with a tracksuit all the time. Well, it essentially looks the same to everyone she would know. But yeah. I guess maybe she moved. I don't know. Uh, well, it seems like it's the same spa <laughs> that she <laughs> got burned in. <laughs> There's no indication that it's different. <laughs> So <clears throat> we don't really know. know who our partner is. I thought that would come into play at some point. They mentioned that the oh, partner yeah. from San Francisco sent uh, Chuck Johnson down to check things out. Yeah. And I, I really feel like there was a lot of missed opportunity in the writing to <laughs> disclose those kinds of details. Mm hmm. Like, who was this mystery partner? Did it, did they ever show up? Uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, it was like, maybe we'll do a sequel where it's like Valerie and the other, the partner 
are both you can't, teamed up I mean, to murder everybody or something. I don't know. Because Chuck John because I mean, first of all, they killed Chuck Johnson without us as an audience even knowing Chuck Johnson's kill. Yeah, maybe we kind of maybe glosses over him. We were supposed to know that, but it was like like if you're gonna kill off Chuck Johnson, it's gotta yeah, be epic. He's like the guy, and also you can't kill off Chuck Johnson. He is the franchise. <laughs> He's the franchise. You can't do it. You're right. And there they could did be no it. sequel yeah. without Chuck Johnson. Yeah, he's the Jack Ryan <sighs> of this movie. You know Unless he, thank you. he has a twin brother. <laughs> like mm. everyone else in this movie. Buck Johnson. <laughs> oh, there yeah, there's that weird dream that uh one of the guys Jimmy. Is, I don't know if it's Jimmy or the other guy. Yeah, what is that other guy's name? Robbie? I don't know. Yeah, Robbie. This movie has right. the problem of two guys that look too similar. What was Chuck's I last name? That. I hate that in Dawson. Dawson. Um like the creek. Chuck <clears throat> Dawson. They really missed some opportunity. The writer who I 100 percent respect. <laughs> um I feel missed some opportunities. Well, this was his third movie, so you know, that's fine. He, he made he's getting the hang of it still. <laughs> he's the one with the hair more after that. So <laughs> this is the one I'm with sure the hair. Chest. Out. Surely it got better. <clears throat> nah, he died in 2015. So well, that's sad. Oh, really? He's yeah. he's he's gone. That's sad. We we lost he wrote him. 38 movies. Yeah, he wrote every all of them. He wrote. Uh, he 30. wrote thirty eight, and he directed thirty three. I mean, I can't do anything except tip my hat to this guy. He has one in post production right now he called wrote, Assassin's Fury. Yeah, and if he's dead, then it's gonna stay there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, thirty eight. <laughs> right. How long has it been in post production? Probably as long as Dickhead. <laughs> I don't know. I just. I don't know, but Ted's in it, so. Ted Lasso, Who? uh, his Ted? brother, uh, Chuck oh. Dawson. Oh, okay. his name is Ted, uh, Ted, Ted Pryor. Pryor, right? Anyways, not Richard or Mark or Mark. This, this guy has eluded us. I'm sorry, he has. Yeah, <sighs> Sledgehammer he has been on my radar, but yeah, nothing else. He's got as his own kind of Fred Olin Ray flair a bit. He loves boobs, very present. Uh, things see, like, in the Sedaris a little bit too. Spa movie, not as egregious, gregarious as um as Sedaris or yeah. perhaps uh, Fred Olenry, but he no. likes women. He does. <laughs> he doesn't have a cartoon dog saying nice tits, but <laughs> he might as well. A couple of these scenes. Not oh everyone's God. a genius, you know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It takes a touch to mind. I can't do it like <laughs> <Nice>. touch <laughs> mind. I don't can't do it like JD. I no, it's too. I can't. No, I can't. Too. Yeah, no, but this guy has eluded us completely, and it blows my mind that I feel like his movie should have been on our radar. Yeah. Well, it's really weird that. Well, here we are. Some, yeah. yeah there was a time that we didn't know Fred Olin Ray. There was How long has he been know. on your list? Couldn't really? identify Godfrey Ho. Yeah. And now we can spot him True. like that. <laughs> no, we True. can't. It still tricks us. <laughs> yeah, it gets us every he time. Still tricks us. <laughs> you know what he fight? I, I bought, I admitted, I, I bought the Snakes Blu-ray because I had to see it again because I'm a deviant fuck. But I watched the full documentary, which is an hour long behind the scenes <laughs> thing about it. At least an hour. I watched the full thing. I was like, this is fucking still going. And it's on Blu-ray, so you can't check. Yeah. And the, or my Blu-ray player doesn't let you check. I don't know. But yeah, Godfrey Ho shows up in there uh, to talk about fucking snakes and the, <laughs> the Taiwan um, <clears throat> Shaw Brothers times of making movies over there. Pretty crazy stuff. But anyway. That's why. Is that a vinegar yeah. syndrome Blu-ray or just a... Uh, it, like no, it's something called Uncovered un, or Unearthed Films, I think is what oh, it is. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Some of the one of these oh. little boutique uh, resurrection distribution outlets. Yeah. Anyway, people get murdered in this movie. They do. <laughs> uh, all Funnily kind enough, of with the, the same way. Yeah, mostly with the. If you were ever in gym class and you had to put your gym clothes in the laundry, I don't know if y'all did this, but we had we had those giant safety pins like they have in this movie. I did not have those. Where you kind of pin your clothes together and toss mm-hmm. them in the thing, and then you know you get your shorts and shirt back in well, together as opposed to having to look through it all. We used yeah, to have we, those little shorts that were like really, really gay, and. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then and and then like shirts that were like loose. Did you when you when you went to gym class? Did you just pick out a new pair every day? Nah, yeah. Every yeah, time well, you went in, basically, you didn't pick them out. You just grabbed them. Right. Really. It was a one size fits all kind of scenario. You'd grab <laughs> them and then uh, <laughs> like we're all this? little kids. It's fine. What? Yeah. yeah. So like, what grade was this? Junior high, high school. Okay. So I didn't do gym in high school. I only did it in junior high. Mm, But uh, we were assigned a shirt pant combo and they had like numbers written on them. Mm. And uh, yeah, you would keep it. The more I think about it, the more disgusting it is. It was like (laughs) they would wash it one day a week. Uh, Yeah, we washed them every day. Yeah, no, you would keep them in your locker. And then it was like Thursday was laundry day or something. And it would throw, you would throw it all in the hamper, but we wouldn't bind them together with that safety pin or anything. And then on Friday, when we would get laundry back, they would basically just dump it all out in the middle of the gym and you would have to go through the pile and find your pair. It's terrible. Uh, That sucks. And match it up. This would would have saved you time. I could admit, I could be misremembering, but I feel like we had like, Everybody would just walk in and grab. And so like then everybody would have the clothes they're going to wear, but we did have lo- we did have lockers. So if you were if you came across a pair of like shorts or shirt that just fit perfect, mm-hmm. <laughs> you just instead kept of like turning them in like afterwards like you were supposed to so they get washed every night, you just throw them in your locker. You'd wear them again, and you'd wear them until you couldn't, honestly, because (laughs) the idea of finding that perfect pair again (laughs) is just very unlikely. So, like, you just, if you found a pair of shorts that were going to, like, fit perfect, you, you weren't about to let them get washed. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There was a there was a sense of uh, psychological brutality to it all. <laughs> yeah, they're and, treating and, you like And I venture to suspect yeah. that it provided much trauma. I went yeah. to four different middle schools oh, thinking about it. My God. So I had a lot of different experience, and there was at least one where I remember. I don't know which one it was. But it was more like that, where it was like you would just get a random pair, and sometimes the 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 elastic or whatever would just be blown out, and you'd have a huge pair of pants. Oh, I hate it. like, does anyone have a safety pin? Because there's no other fucking pants here. I don't remember where that was, but shout where out to that y'all? fucking did, school. Did y'all shout out to that? School? <laughs> <laughs> did y'all shower after gym at yeah. that age? Yeah. I never would. Yeah, I, mean, I, I didn't either. They were there. We didn't have time. Sometimes I needed it, sometimes I didn't. It was never that rigorous. I mean, it was just regular PE. So it was, it was, but we would, I want to say it was like once a week, maybe once every other week, we would, we would go outside and run a mile. And that would get you, yeah. especially in Texas, right? Like that would get you kind of sweaty. Yeah. Yeah, it would just towel off. I didn't like stink back then. So yeah. I still anyway. don't. <laughs> oh, okay. I still don't, but I still like to shower. Oh yeah, showering. I great. shower with y'all right now. <laughs> <laughs> Someone, we. I was hoping that the lady that gets in the shower in this movie towards the beginning would be melted because there is someone that says you're gonna melt in there if you stay yeah. in there too long. <laughs> and I was like, oh, they're definitely pouring acid on her now. But then no, she just gets stabbed. Because then the killer, it looks like the killer drags the body into the the sauna. 
And I was like, oh, yeah. maybe they'll just crank the sauna up real high in a way that doesn't mm-hmm. make sense and melt her that That's way. what I thought. But no. Just, just stabs. All stabs. Yeah. Well, they, yeah. some, there's some bludgeons with yeah. a weight <sighs> at one point. Oh, yeah. But that, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mostly, mostly yeah. mildly creative stabbing. I'd shower with y'all right now. Okay. <laughs> if I had my stuff. <laughs> if I had my stuff. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, uh, this movie's pretty fun. We're not really talking yeah. about it much, but it was a good time. Yeah, it was. It was. I liked it. It was thoroughly enjoyable. It was fun. It was fun. It was lighthearted. <laughs> you know, it's murder, tr- it's but... really trashy and very dumb, but nothing like yeah. super outrageous. There's some little twists and turns, especially when she spoiled. We've already spoiled it, I guess. But when you re- reveals that Rondo is the person Ballard. that you see at the very very beginning of the movie that gets fried in the in the uh, tanning bed hmm. burn oh. body right out the gate nice all right it's basically no country for old men <laughs> how is it no country for old men well, Lieutenant Morgan <laughs> is much. Tommy Lee Jones's character. Okay. And then uh, uh cool. what's her name? Rhonda is uh is uh Javier. Javier Bardem. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh Chuck Dawson is Josh Brolin. Wow, okay. Just a young plucky guy trying to make a name for himself. Mm-hmm. Who found a briefcase full of cash? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Similar but, but, the, but instead of a briefcase full of cash, it's a spa full of hot bods. <laughs> that he can find. <laughs> that he's got to protect my day, at all costs. Yeah, <laughs> back, back in my day, that was money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it still is for Rhonda that, Johnson. Yeah, he that beats up that money. guy, and then <laughs> that that broad is like... Hey, why don't I give you a ride home and then show you my tits? That's like oh, yeah, finding that was cool. That's like finding a that's box fucking of currency, cash. bro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know what hasn't devalued? Tits. <laughs> that's right. I would say it has. Ass is much more valuable. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How has it? Well, it's not that tits have devalued, but cultural cultural currency of the bo- the butt is like immense right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Butts are in, and mm-hmm. I'm in them. Because <laughs> you like anal sex. It's true. <laughs> I'm sober tonight. <laughs> oh boy. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, this is a welcome to the cultural discussion of um, butts I don't versus know. I agree with something. <laughs> I agree with something. Just three white guys talking about <laughs> ass and tits. What else? Are you, what else are you asking for with this show? <laughs> what else do we have to cover? Let's do favorite parts. Hmm. Uh, starting with apocalypse, I guess. I think my favorite part was the tanning bed. Oh, the very beginning. Burned up in the tanning bed. Uh, And then sparks fly out the bottom, and then smoke comes out the side, and then we go to the next scene where that would be JD's plot time. (laughs) I've never written down anything for the plot yet. He'd be like a paragraph deep. (laughs) It was playing on claustrophobia. So as like somebody, if you were to analyze it from the perspective of somebody writing fear, you're t- taking a legitimate fear. I, I don't know. I thought that was a good element. <clears throat> it was not followed up with. There was zero explanation as to why the tanning bed burned her up. It seemed like it was just a freak accident. Yeah, but yeah. they could have explained that, but they, they chose not to explain it. See, and, maybe this uh, is where the partner from San Francisco comes in, right? Maybe, maybe. And that would have been <laughs> a great addition to the plot. But unfortunately, that wasn't there. I did, though, like that the way that was shot. Yeah. yeah it was shot very I have good. a second favorite part. Yeah, go and for it's it. It's actually Justin's. The, the locker room scene 
when the black girl was killed and she was put in that locker but then <laughs> there was a, a fake arm coming out of one locker when mm. she opened it good one <laughs> and it was like oh just kidding it was i mean that's terrible <laughs> that's terrible because you build up as a writer the suspense and then you want to kill the suspense i get that i get the element of wanting to write that but there's no lead in to why yeah no it, it was there's like a no weird lead prank, in to but... why there was a prank going on yeah yeah so that's it, it was it was terribly perfect it was executed perfectly it was nice but it's a gag whenever, whenever the girl that was actually dead fell out it was it was done really well um yeah i mean there's not one directorial thing wrong with this film really i mean maybe y'all have a different opinion but um there's a ton of writing issues with it i would i would agree with that <laughs> uh joey favorite part uh hi i'm chuck dawson who the hell are you hi i'm chuck dawson <laughs> <laughs> hey mr erickson chuck dawson <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. you, you wish and yeah. the guy on the phone just the way he answers that was, Chuck Doss? was pretty funny he's just like why is it a lot of people say their name full names on the phone in this movie mm -hmm. and then probably <laughs> the other thing was just the the broad that Chuck Dawson bangs immediately who's the client girl she she goes to the gym she got the huge cans cans <laughs> he pulls away he's like did i mention i'm chuck dawson well, he really... <laughs> uh just after she after he does her presumably we don't see it but then later in the movie or later that night maybe there's these vandals that tag the store with spray paint and spray paint shit all over the the front the storefront oh no vandals Teams. And heels, teen vandals. <laughs> here's, here's the local Zumba chapter. <laughs> They're hitting the fucking aerobics Robots place, suck. and she's one of them. But I don't think that she's supposed to be the same character. Yeah, it's like V. and Green Knight, where it's like, is it the same? person or just <laughs> same actress or i just <laughs> what's I, happening here <laughs> I, I felt like they were just like no one cares just jump in we need another yeah. body to kill yeah. it's like if anyone puts this together that you're the same person it's fine they'll just think you're a shitty client i guess whatever yeah they're not wrong i i mean i wouldn't have noticed unless they except for that they show her face really close up in the murder shots and i recognized her teeth Mm. yeah yeah she had unique teeth mm -hmm. um yeah i liked near the end when <laughs> Rhonda, who has spent her life hating beautiful people because she can no longer be beautiful is then celebrated as a hero by all the beautiful people and she gives mm. this insane smile to the group <laughs> <laughs> I am happy. <laughs> oh. uh, that's that's a fun one. Um, and then I had another one. Uh, there's like a weird look when Chuck Dawson and that broad are sharing diet Pepsis. And she asks him a question and he takes, there's a very long shot of him just taking a deep sip of Pepsi. <laughs> he doesn't respond or anything like that. He's just taken a, big long pull of pepsi <laughs> <laughs> you want to pull yeah <laughs> a pepsi <laughs> diet pepsi specific oh yeah because you're this is a health movie it's a health movie um that's that's about it we covered everything else i mean really my favorite was hi i'm chuck dawson <laughs> <laughs> yeah just that scene is, yeah 
what the hell are you? Who the hell are you? Who do you think you are? What are you doing here? Hi, I'm Chuck Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> this is good stuff. All right. Uh, well, <laughs> now that we've got that out of the way, let's move on to the bees. The bees. The bees. Yeah, we had a, a bulge, or a mentioned bulge. Hello, Barry. Where are you? Call me as soon as you get in. You're not going to believe this, but I finally got a date with a guy from a ride house. You know the one with the incredible bulge in his pants? <laughs> <laughs> Off screen bulge. Boobs. A long butt, a burning body, uh, bazongas and big naturals. Uh, we had some beefcakes, some blood, bags of trash, uh, bullets, a body through glass, blade. Yes. Um, and then we uh, had a bunch had of a, uh, honoraries. We had a phone outside. Yep. So one of the honoraries, we had a phone outside. Mm -hmm. We had Pepsi, comma, diet. We had some red lights. We had a pool. We had a trash can. I don't think people understand how how epic phone outside is. <laughs> as a <laughs> bee, I mean that's a good one. It's a great one. I th what yeah, was the, we first nice saw it in Mister No Legs? Maybe <laughs> Mister No Legs, definitely. No. Oh, the astrologer. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, that's the right. It was the astrologer. Both yeah. of these movies have it. I'm pretty sure. Suck yeah, they it. do. Yeah, suck it. Yeah, it's it's such a weird one. <laughs> it is it just keeps because I I grew up in the age of phones attached to cords, and um, yeah, we we never in my family had a phone outside. Oh God, yeah, they were screwed rich. into the wall. Like you, you wouldn't you wouldn't bring that outside. You'd have to have one of those really long cables. Yeah. You would have. Yeah. And I did not. Yeah. Like, uh, at one point, you might have a cordless phone that you would bring yes. outside. Yes. But we never, had, a, we had those. never a whole handset that you would drag all the way out and onto a table in your front lawn like a psychopath. No, an actually corded, corded phone outside. I mean, that's a status symbol. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In your lawn seats, yeah, yeah. Uh, anything that I missed that y'all can think of as far as bees? Oh, uh, we had like a maybe a Buttafuoco. We were kind of debating on that. Yeah, uh, I I agree with you. No mustache equals no Buttafuoco. He's gotta yeah. have some kind of facial hair along with the mullet, the dark hair, yeah. or yeah. you know, facial hair with some kind of beard hair. That yeah, cool. All right, well, let's rate this and get out of here, starting okay. with Apocalypse. I'm going to go 3.5. <clears throat> okay. 3.5, and I feel like that's a solid score. <clears throat> I don't feel like that's me talking shit in any way. Um, it's pretty defensive. <laughs> <laughs> you're, def you're defensive. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, I'll give it a four. Okay. <laughs> because fuck you, and because you make me because... feel like I'm talking shit by giving it three point five. I'm not. I'm not. This was a. The writing is terrible. <laughs> the writing is bad. You've been That's going it. on and on about the writing, the, as if the other yes. films we watch are much better, <laughs> more better written. <laughs> Well, the astrologer. No, I'm saying is the, the issue with this film, and because he's the writer and the director, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's what I'm speaking to is like his writing was, it had some issues, <laughs> top notch. <laughs> his his direction. What issues? What are you talking about? His ability to make a movie is solid. He yeah, does not he, make. I mean. I mean, he, you understand, like he's shooting a scene with all red light, like y'all love the red room of pain, baby. Like he's there. <laughs> he's shooting things. It's a good looking trash movie. His mind is working to make movies. And, and I guess that's why I like him. I was like, I kind of feel that Corman vibe from him. Yeah. And is like, is writing perfect? No, but. I also don't think he gave a shit. And I think he just was like, fuck it. It's good enough. Let's make this movie. Come on. 
and I can forgive like a ton. <laughs> like whenever someone has that kind of attitude, I can forgive like a ton of poor writing because it's like, shit, this guy was just ambitious. And uh, I don't know. I really liked him. I really liked this movie. That's how I feel. All right. A four. I've also had clubs. way more scotch than I meant to. <laughs> <laughs> I knew something was up. <laughs> it's fun getting accidentally too drunk on scotch because that's not one that you can like easily throw back, you know? <laughs> oh, what? It was pretty easy. Or at least for me, <laughs> right? It's like vodka will sneak up on you. Tequila will sneak up on you. Scotch, I feel like that's a more deliberate. You think liquor. I'm aware. Like, I have no excuse. It's like if you drank, if you're dr- that drunk on scotch, you are at least aware of how drunk you are. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you're aware. I don't know. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Man, I want to get drunk on scotch now. Maybe I want to be healthy again. Week. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll feel better soon. <laughs> Sad. Stop shitting water out of my asshole. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, ACL fucked me. Um, Joey, what's your rating? <clears throat> this is weird. I don't have to follow. A tra- more traditional apocalypse rating and go 3.75. Ooh. All right. Neck and neck. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just, it's better than a 3.5, but I just don't feel great about giving it a four. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to fall. I'm going to do with that weird quarter thing that we're doing here. <laughs> um, I don't need, I don't feel like I need to give too much more of a reason. If, Yacked about it quite a bit. Uh, it's fun. And yeah, I think what you're getting at Apocalypse that at least I think is that he's not taking it very seriously sometimes. And other times he's, you know, trying some stuff out, but it's all fun and it's not, he's not, uh, weighted down by you know a script or tension <laughs> or character building or anything like that the he's just like should be lights look pretty good by. uh yeah you got the blood ready great i got i know exactly how to shoot this like to where we can still <laughs> hit the strip clubs <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it is a good time i'm not gonna Complain about, you know, 15, 20 minutes of just women doing aerobics and close up. <laughs> it's scattered throughout the movie. Pretty fun time. Like, love Rhonda Johnson. I was like, <clears throat> Amer- living the American dream. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I agree with you that it's it's better than a, it's not quite a four. It's better mm. than a three and a half. Uh, but I'm in a bit of an awkward spot because I don't want to also give it a 3.75 because then we get like a weird 3.83 repeating thing. <laughs> it's like you'll cross streams. And I mm. think that the overall score should be 3.75. So I'm going to give it a three and a half because I think Ooh. that it is. But you shouldn't legislate from the bench. I will do. <laughs> Whatever I want. I think I know a little bit more about how to run this show than you do, Apocalypse. Fair enough. <laughs> you wasted Fair ass. Enough. <laughs> the t- Joey and I are finally sober on our high horses. <laughs> like, <laughs> how dare you? You, you embarrass yourself, sir. <laughs> Rambling oh, about writing say. for five minutes. No one cares. <laughs> Do you think people care about you? Your thoughts? <laughs> Let's get into what I think about this. <laughs> <laughs> I've had two Cokes. Uh, it's a fun movie. It's a really fun movie. Uh, I wish that it had a little bit more grime for like a trash movie, like whether it's how it's shot or like some of the subject matter, but it's it's still a really good one uh it's not as good as death spa which i don't know why that still holds a special place in my heart because the effects um, are crazy in that movie at the end because i are... was in oklahoma <laughs> 
and I'm pretty the, sure. I still contend that Death Spa has one of the best late title cards of any movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, oh uh, yeah, it's good. It's that reveal is. <laughs> I don't even want to spoil it. I know it's For amazing. Who hasn't seen it? It's amazing. Death Spa um, is like a four or five. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. That being said, watch this movie. Like it's it's definitely yeah, this watchable. Time. This is this has mass appeal. Uh, you don't have yes. to be fucked up like us. Like <laughs> I would not recommend most people watch Calamity of Snakes or you this know, is like entry level s- trash or Curse Two. Right. Watch this yeah. movie, but I would also suggest research this guy. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see more of his stuff. Yeah, I David Pryor. Matt David Pryor. Pryor. Yeah, David, David Pryor. Yeah. So Dang, yeah, three and a half. So that leads us to three point okay. seven five bags of trash for nineteen eighty seven's Killer Workout, also known as Aerobicide, from the Trash Movie Kings podcast. No, shout out to uh, Lauren uh, Hafner, who I think when this comes out. Like in three days after it comes out, we'll be headed to her bikini fitness show to compete oh. for the first time. So good luck, Lauren. Good luck, you Lauren. Def- friend of definitely the show. Definitely don't good listen luck. to this show. <laughs> good luck. I'm going to put this at the beginning. So if she does happen to turn it on. All right. No, I'm not going to do that. Just <clears throat> clip clip it as its own little thing and then and post it and on TikTok, then maybe she'll see it. Exactly. <laughs> then she'll see it. She'll repost it and we'll gain like three followers. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Fucking, fucking win, win. It. We have to stand <laughs> on the shoulders I mean, of come on. slightly taller people. I mean, she's like five seven, maybe. That's all. she's got me beat. I'm just kidding, I'm taller than that. What? <laughs> what I am is true. Okay, bud. <laughs> I'm five eight and I'm one quarter. I thought you were five seven and three quarters. Yeah, me too. Until two <laughs> years in a row at the doctor's office. You measured a little taller, huh? I'm taller. Are you doing that Batman hanging thing in the morning? No, no. I just uh, I do the back roller. Oh, well. mm. so maybe that's some uh, spinal fluid. I also years grew, later we find I out also you have a terrible grew, tumor or something. I also grew a spine. I don't know if that can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's been our show. <laughs> Thank you for watching and listening. Thank you guys for giving up your Thursday nights, Friday morning. We will see you next time.